Hey guys, Cliff here for That Was History, and this week happens to be one of the best weeks of the year. Why you ask? Sharks. Lots and lots of sharks. And in honor of Shark Week, we're taking a look at the story of the USS Indianapolis, and it's not so fortunate encounter with the sharks of the Pacific. The USS Indianapolis was a Portland-class heavy cruiser of the United States Navy, and if nothing else, this ship made a name for itself in 1945 after successfully delivering crucial components for the first atomic bomb to a base on the Pacific island of Tinian. This bomb would later level Hiroshima and help escalate the end of fighting in Japan during World War II. Our topic for today happened shortly after this accomplishment, however. After delivering the parts of the atomic bomb, the USS Indianapolis was given orders to sail from Guam and meet up with the USS Idaho near the Philippines to prepare for an invasion of Japan. The ship left on July 28th to their next destination. The first day of sailing went just like clockwork, despite concerns of Japanese submarines patrolling the Pacific. It wasn't until shortly after midnight on July 30th that everything changed. Without warning, a Japanese sub launched a torpedo and hit the Indianapolis in the starboard bow, and a second torpedo followed. The second hit about midship, which caused fuel tanks and powder magazines to explode in a massive chain reaction that basically split the ship in two. Water rushed into the ship and the Indianapolis was claimed by the sea in only 12 minutes. Of the 1,196 men on board, 900 made it into the water alive, which given the circumstances was a very good outcome. That's about 75% of the crew still alive after a massive torpedo attack. Unfortunately for the crew, their circumstances were about to get a lot worse. It would be another four days before any form of contact would be made between the crew and their rescuers. During this time, concerns turned towards exposure to the elements, dehydration, saltwater poisoning, and of course, shark attacks. Sharks from all around were drawn to the crew's location because of the initial explosion, the sinking ship, thrashing body movements, and of course, blood in the water. In the beginning, sharks focused on the floating dead. The bodies were a quick and easy meal, but as time passed, you guessed it, the sharks began to target the living. This forced the crew to make decisions and sacrifices they never dreamed of. It was not uncommon for the bleeding members to be isolated away from the group, and as soon as anyone died, their body became a sacrifice to appease the beast from below. Other than that, the only tactic that seemed to work was to huddle together, to appear very large and pray that rescue would arrive soon or death would come quickly. Finally, on the fourth day, shortly after 11 a.m., a Navy plane flew over the stranded crew and radioed for help. A few hours later, another seaplane arrived that dropped rafts and survival supplies. The pilot of this plane, Lieutenant Adrian Marks, also disobeyed orders and landed on the water's surface in order to help rescue those who were at the greatest risk of a shark attack. A little after midnight, the USS Doyle finally arrived to rescue the remaining survivors. Only 370 17 crewmen survived their battle for life during their four days in the water. Estimates for the number of deaths from shark attacks range from around 24 to almost 150. There's no way of knowing for sure, but I do want to point out that the biggest killers were not the sharks. If there were 900 that made it into the water alive and up to 150 were taken by sharks, that still leaves 433 people who died of other causes. No matter how we divvy up the cause of death, the USS Indianapolis incident remains the worst maritime disaster in US naval history and very likely contains the largest shark attack numbers in such a short period of time. Also, since I know you are itching to find out which species of shark was responsible, the answer is most likely the oceanic white tip shark. White tips are very aggressive because food sources in the open ocean are sometimes scarce. They take what they can get and are not afraid to deviate from their typical diet. Thus, anything floating on the ocean's surface, like the crew of the Indianapolis, becomes a target. It has also been mentioned that tiger sharks may have been involved in some of these killings. As you probably already know, tiger sharks are also very aggressive and are considered to have the widest food spectrum of all sharks. It is not uncommon to find inedible man-made objects in their stomach, which is reason enough to believe that they wouldn't have missed an opportunity to investigate the hundreds of bodies floating above them. So tell me, do you have a favorite species of shark, and why is it your favorite? Leave me a comment down below. Also, be sure to check out these other awesome videos. Just because this episode is almost finished doesn't mean that you have to be. 
I personally recommend any of them. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.